about spending your money, you're donating 1% of all purchases to the Singularity Institute and 2% on your gas and groceries. So if you're interested in expanding your uh, credit capabilities, check it out. It's also back at the registration desk. Our next speaker has uh, traveled a great distance to be here. He is Dmitry Itzkov, born in Russia in 1980. He studied in the corporate management department of the Moscow Economic Academy, and today he leads New Media Stars, which is a Russian internet media company that owns several newspapers, in addition to the TV channel Russia.ru, which has 600,000 daily viewers. Dmitry is an active investor, but his primary passion today is the strategic social movement Russia 2045, which he founded in 2005. The goals of the movement are to establish Russia as an international hub for cutting edge research, to advance, to advance cybernetic technologies that can extend human lifespan and improve quality of life, and to promote technology driven humanism through the media. He is here today to tell the story of the Russia 2045 movement and to outline its ambitious research agenda. Please welcome Dmitry Itzkov. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Just uh, trying to check everything is okay. No? You know, I founded, uh, actually I founded the movement just seven months ago and my interest comes from 2005, but uh, in fact the movement is uh, just seven months old. And uh, before I begin, I would like to say that uh, the vision I have for the uh, future and uh, humankind would be considered by many, if not the most, to be bold. But here, uh, I, I believe uh, I'm unlike, uh, among like-minded uh, like people uh, more so than anywhere else in the world. Uh, so that's why it's a great, great pleasure for me to share my vi uh, vision with you today. Just checking. <laughs> so I'm not a scientist, I'm not a philosopher. Uh, for the last 12 years, my work has been in media project and uh, particularly internet media. When I became interested in the idea of extending human lifespan and became a supporter of the idea of attaining immortality via the use of cybernetic technologies, I immediately understood how I could apply my experience. However, I've created a social movement and I'm working hard to promote this project not just because I have some understanding how to do it. I'm also doing these things because they are necessary to make uh, cybernetic immortality a reality. And there are many functioning uh, innovations in the world today, so we are not far from the main, uh, making this project a reality. And now, more than ever, the idea has to be promoted publicly, so that its supporters will uh, declare a commitment to it and create a social mandate. Scientists who are ready to devote, uh, devote time to the project uh, need this to happen, and philosophers who are ready to provide uh, a rationale for the project need this to happen. And everyone who is ready to get involved but is holding back uh, needs this to happen. It is scientists in particular who have proposed dozens of projects relevant to the movement who have formed the backbone of Russia 2045. They have been joined by philosophers, public fig uh, figures and visionaries. Now my task is to make the project international. That is why I'm here telling you about the social movement Russia 25. I have a clear picture in my head, and I believe that it is that how things will be and must be. I have limited time to speak, so I have to, pick th uh, to keep things short, but I would like to attest to the fact that the technical projects discussed in the presentation were created by professionals and represent our real plan of actions. And some of the technologies uh, rep presented already exist. Uh, others we plan to create within five to ten years, and uh, still others, modern, modern science doesn't yet know how to create. Uh, the social movement Russia 2045 was conceived of as a means of promoting the idea of humanity attaining cybernetic immortality. As the founders of the movement, we believe that these technologies in particular will provide the impulse that is so necessary right now to accelerate technological progress. It is cybernetic immortality in, in particular that will be able to grant people real freedom, including freedom from influence by the environment and their opportunity to explore the far reaches of space. 
Moreover, it, it is possible that this scenario will become a reality sooner than other such possibilities for extending lifespan all the way to immortality. But in order to make our project a reality, there need to be changes in the ethics, culture, and thinking of those who will sustain the steady development of civilization during and after the evolutionary transformations, transformation envisioned by the project. On this slide, uh, you can see uh, the goals of our movement. We believe that humankind is currently on the verge of a complete collapse of its value structures. Consumer society is mostly concerned only with maintaining a comfortable existence and satisfying its desires. Sin uh, science focuses on meeting people's consumptive needs and inventions uh, that do not make an enormous profit are rejected, deemed uh, non-viable and necessary. Our civilization, using modern means of transportation and communication, is incapable of liberating people from the constraints of a physical body, of eliminating disease and death. Consumer society provides corporations the opportunity to earn lots of money, but it never helps achieve a technological breakthrough. Uh, we are running in place. Even though we have a creative and intellectual capabilities to make many great discoveries, we believe that the world needs a different ideological paradigm. We must formulate an or overarching goal that will provide a new trajectory for development and that will facilitate a scientific and technological revolution. For many days in a row, people have been demonstrating in New York with cries of down with, down with capitalism. These cries give uh, credence uh, to the fact that current capitalist model is undergoing a serious crisis. And there is every reason to believe that it will only intensify. We believe that the world needs a new uh, social formation that can be based around the ideas of transhumanism. I believe that 2045 movement should use the term neo-humanity to refer to this social, new social formation. There is a well-known aphorism. Political action happens on the streets. In order, in order for us to take political action, we don't have to take to the streets. We have to become the intellectual lead uh, of the future, to want to develop technologies and to begin doing so, uh, to build a, a model of new world. The community uh, that will be built within the framework of the 2045 project will bring people together, uh, steeping them in the idea. Over time, a new generation of like-minded people will emerge and out of that generation will grow a new political and scientific elite. We need revolution, but we don't need a bloody revolution as, as uh, there already was in the history of my country. We need the uh, technological revolution, not street rights. The next slide has information on what we have managed to accom accomplish in seven months of work. Of course, the concept of immortality still inspires doubt uh, in many scientists, though we have already moved past the stage of distrust and demonstrated the, the seriousness of our intentions. We have managed to move the discussion from the platitude, is it possible or not, to the platitude, why does it need to be done? We have come in earnest and are here to stay. With or without... Um, I'm sorry. With or without governmental support, we will open a specialized center in Russia and it will focus on developing the technologies needed to achieve the cybernetic immortality of a person. For the first time ever, anywhere in the world, we are confident that such a project can be carried out without government support by bringing people together who are interested in the project through the internet. But uh, the government that supports the idea and invests in the project will in the future become the economic and political leader of the world. That is not my uh, view alone. For example, famous in Great Britain scientist Kevin Warwick stated the same hypothesis in an interview to our movement. Uh, next slide shows what our main areas of technical activity are. The aim of the first project 
known as avatar is the creation of a robot copy of a human being controllable th through a view computer interface. When I am when I'm asked to give the gist of this project, I tell people to recall the film Surrogates, which depicts a world in which every person has an artificial body and he controls remotely. That uh, he controls remotely. The makers of the that blockbuster put an accent on the negative slide of such scenario, uh, but nonetheless, the film is highly graphic demonstration of the idea allows one to get an immediate sense of what it is. The Body B project creation of a life support system for the brain, a system that will link the brain to the outside world and a method for transplanting the brain into an avatar equipped to hold it. Project Rebrain is in essence a Russian project to reverse engineer the brain. In the long term we plan to create an artificial brain and transfer personality into it. But we believe that um, uh, an orthodox idea related to the transfer of consciousness to an alternative substrate also can be developed. There are different takes on how artificial bodies will advance further. There are a lot of different ideas out there. Raymond Kurzweil hypothesized that the human body will be able to take any form composable by nanorobots. But in our plan, the end goal of uh, uh, the end goal is an artificial body similar to a hologram. What you see on the screen is specific projects to be carried out within the framework of Avatar project. By specialists estimates, the first Avatar could be built within the next five to seven years. After all, many of the technologies have already been invented. Of course, in the early stages, it will be a lot simpler than in the film, but even uh, then it is enough to turn the world upside down. Avatars will be able to put uh, to, uh, to be put to use uh, by the Ministry of Emergency, situations, firefighters, police. Avatars will replace the fragile human body in outer space. The avatar will even be able to serve as a business representative, traveling on business trips, signing contracts, etc. And its components, parts, will without a doubt be used in helping the disabled. Yes, there are some problem areas in certain, in certain technologies, for instance, autonomous energy supply and their operating speed of brain computer interface. Nonetheless, in five to seven years time, our project will have made so much progress that it will have a pivotal effect on how cybernetic technologies are perceived in society. It will significantly change the world and it will become as popular as the automobile. Uh, we are aware that such technologies have undergone significant, significant progress in the U.S. Thanks in part to the efforts of our compatriots uh, who left Russia in the 1990s and 2000s. And that, uh, that considerable advancements uh, have been made in certain European countries. And we believe that joining forces will only help things. Why waste time in when inventing the wheel uh, when the bicycle already exists? The main object, objective of the Body B project, as I said before, is to design and build a system of life support for the human brain and a system that will allow the brain to communicate with the external environment. This is the idea uh, that our movement is criticized most for. But I'm confident that there will be many people out, of the, out there on the verge of death who will decide to extend their lives by in some time with the help of this technology before we are able to accomplish the third part of our project. There is already, already the Geminoid Android which has a face that is indistinguishable from a person uh, from only a few feet away. Technology is progressing, so why not prolong people's lives in a body that externally is no different and is, and is functionally almost the same? Russia has its own traditions in this area. Uh, for example, Sergei Bruchanenko is famous around the world for having been the first in the world to create a lan, uh, hot lung machine. And Vladimir Demikhov, the father of transplantology, uh, performed several successful experiments in which he transplanted dog heads, resulting in a two-headed dog. This uh, this is our project to reverse engineer the brain. In September, the Rebrain project was presented at the Neuroinformatics 
2011 conference in Boston by Vitaly Dunin-Barkovsky. Once we have an understanding of how the human brain is organized and what human consciousness is, we will be able to transfer consciousness to a new, more advanced body. Some hold the opinion that the intelligence of modern man is an artificial intelligence. The only remaining natural thing about it is its protein-based host, the brain. Taking that a step further, the human brain is simply an instrument for connecting consciousness with the body. And when we are able to create an artificial intelligence, an artificial brain, and transfer our personality into an artificial body, then we will have a unique creature, a super person with superpowers. Our upcoming plans include organizing an international conference called Global Future 2045 that will be devoted to issues of modeling and predicting global dynamics, future scenarios for humankind and universal history. It's no accident we have so many plans related to social networks and online resources. These measures will help to make discussion on the project global. And the more participants uh, the rise in the social movement, the more like-minded people the project gets involved, the faster we will be able to achieve results. Our movement, just like any other complex and unusual project, provokes a great number of objections. For the most part, these are negative stereotypes held by society about immortality and cybernetic technologies, and I'm prepared to respond to each of them. First, our project is for all people. It is for that reason that we insist that all our technical plans remain open, and in consequence uh, that the uh, technologies themselves remain open. We will openly publish the results, uh, results of our research that is the project's guiding principle. Second, artificial bodies will be available to all who want them. It is uh, each individual's choice whether to use new technology or to live one's life the way as it is. These technologies will not lead to social stratification, but on the contrary will decrease tensions. People will cease judging others by the color of their skin, by their belonging to one race or another. Third, their technologies used to manufacture artificial bodies and to transfer human personality into them will not be based on oil and gas. They will be of a different nature. And if, with the help of cybernetic technologies, humankind is finally able to live in outer space, all demographic problems will be solved. Fourth, uh, our opponents say that death is a natural process. However, statistics are stubborn, and studies show that only 2% of people are ready to accept that. A friend of mine once said on Facebook that everyone wants a new phone, new car, a new laptop, but when a person has cancer, all he wants is to survive. Fifth, uh, throughout history, there have been a great many false beliefs, and by both laymen and great scientists. Leibniz didn't accept Newton's theory of gravity. Galileo ignored uh, Kepler's laws of planetary motion. It is uh, senseless in this day and age to say that something is technically possible or not. It is senseless to accuse us of idealism. We are setting the technological trajectory. Uh, these are the steps toward, ma uh, toward making the 2045 project a reality, and every idea begins with a single step. So, do not believe those who say that it is impossible to create an artificial brain or transfer consciousness to an artificial body. The very statement, it will never happen, contradicts the principles of science. Indeed, the technical means do not yet exist to accomplish the ultimate goal of the project, but new technologies are being invented all the time and the possibilities are extending. At one time, at atomic energy seemed like science fiction and sp space travel far-fetched. But not a single self-respecting scientist can say with confidence that there is no chance of an idea emerging in the next five to ten years that will make the impossible possible. It's a question of time, and it's a matter of making the effort of bringing people together. Our project can be, uh, become a, a national idea for every country, and a global idea It can unite people and governments. This project must be made possible. Six, every technological breakthrough absolutely must be accompanied by the elevation of people's values and an increase of awareness. Otherwise, civilization will meet its downfall. It's uh, a law of the development of civilizations. 
We humans will need to evolve intellectually and spiritually together with this project. In gaining our new capabilities, people will cease to be so dependent uh, on their bodies and many things will open up spiritually. People open respond to our message by saying we want to remain immortal in works of art and people's memories, but immortality, is, immortality in iPhones, books and in portraits of their inventors and creators is nothing more than an elegant metaphor. People live only to the point that they can no longer communicate, have control of something, have the ability to defend themselves in a court of law, develop physically, intellectually, spiritually. We understand that even life of the universe is finite, so we want to reproduce our definition of immortality, some criteria, uh, criteria orienting points. And we will consider our goal achieved uh, when technolo uh, technologies exist that allow us to extend human lifespan from 5,000 to 1 million years. However, the choice remains in the hands of each individual. Here is an example of technology that is impossible to create at the present time. Two American agency, uh, agencies, the Defense Agency DARPA and the Science Space Agency NASA are developing their first interstellar spaceship in the history of humankind. The spacecraft is, is set to be launched in 2111. According to their director of DARPA's Department of Tec Tactical Technologies, David Nayland, work on this project will require scientists to go out and to tackle problems that we will have you asking questions you didn't even know to ask at the beginning. Two powerful trends are currently converging. The evolution of the technological environment and the suborganization of people. It is clear that as technologies advance and the technology of human brain interfaces improves, people will be able to control machines with their thoughts. With the development of artificial organs and other system, systems, it will become possible to connect, or I should say to embed, additional terabytes of memory in a person, such that a person will be able to control a fantastic amount of resources, instantly sending their and receiving information. And the main problem uh, that will be faced by this super being, uh, that, the hu uh, that humans could very soon become, uh, will be that its lifespan is too short. We don't want to die, and anyone who answers no to the question, do we want to be immortal, always, always says yes to the same question which regards to their relatives. It's clear that the refusal to accept the idea of cybernetic immortality and just immortality is the result of a fear of the ego and the, the shock of the future. People are afraid because they cannot imagine what the future will look like, and our job is to show people what it will look like. People are held back by fear of change, inertia, refusal to accept the new. Those are the things keeping people away from admitting their desire to live forever. We are planning to transform Russia 2045 into a global movement with the name Near Humanity 2045. In this slide I would like to show you my vision of the objectives for new humanity for the next thousand years. While you look them over, I will say a few words. There is a long history of tense relations between our countries, uh, Russia and US. Uh, there is a history of uh, competition in space technology, the history of the Cold War and the arms race. I would like to propose we start a new race, a race to attain immortality. And it will be the first positive project, one that does not make relations worse but improves them. We will come together for the first time in order to do something so useful and good. Common sense must trump egotism. Instead of inventing new threats to people's health and lives, we for the first time will think about how to preserve life. For the first time, our competition will be for a good cause. And it's not important who wins. Uh, that is, what's important is that people get to live as long as they want. All humanity will benefit, benefit from this. And now back to the future, fr from the future to the present. On the screen you can see the planned structure of the project for the next 10 years. I would like to sum up the presentation to recall the world, uh, words of a famous scientist and I'm a man I respect, Stephen Hawking, to whom I would like to give one of the first avatars I create. All these possible separate universes exist 
simultaneously in a state of quantum superposition. When you decide to take a measurement, you choose a subset of histories from the range of possibilities, and those histories share specific measurable parameters. The history of the universe that you perceive is chosen from that subset of histories. In other words, you choose the past. And I would like to go further in that, that in this, you choose the uh, future also. Call me a romantic, but if we all decide that we want to live in a world in which people are immortal and truly free, uh, then we will end up in such a world. Uh, we need to gather a critical mass of people who think in their same way. When we all decide that that's what we want, our ideas will begin to be realized. So let's get together and live in a reality in which we will live forever. It's our right, and if someone doesn't like the new free world, let them stay in whichever world they want. But they shall not challenge our right to be free and immortal. That is my dream, and I'm ready to devote my life to it. Right now, in this place, there are probably more like-minded people present than ever before. And there are also like-minded journalists here. And I suggest that we take advantage of this opportunity and declare our intentions to change the world. And I ask to consider my speech an open invitation to all world leaders and to the head of the